before I start, um, I want to dedicate my share to the memory of my good friend, um, Idan Greenstein, who just passed away suddenly, um, about two weeks ago at this point. Um, it can hit our community really hard, um, so I wanted to take this opportunity um, to have, make sure his mission has an aliyah from our learning today. Um, so I also want to thank my family for letting me hog the Wi-Fi for a little while. It's a little crazy with the Wi-Fi situation, so thanks, fam. Um, and for also being such a great support system, uh, not wanting to kill each other during quarantine, um, which is definitely a, lot, a big blessing. Um, I also want to thank Yavna and Kavis and the 25 for 25 um, project for creating so many opportunities for students to keep learning and connect with each other in their Judaism, um, even when the world is a little crazy. Um, a huge shout out to Sheer Kaplan, obviously, for facilitating <laughs> the Zoom for a series and for Sheer Galler for the beautiful flyers and for my texting about trying to change the times, whatnot. Um, my brother takes, is taking an AP this afternoon. We had to move the time, but we're good. Um, and think not last but not least, he's not here because he has to take a final. Um, but Jacob Bach is the heart and soul of 25 for 25 um, and for creating this beautiful um, initiative um, for being able to connect um, people, um, students from all over the country, all over the world. It's really incredible to be able to have people all over the world um, be involved in this project and um, shoving a lot of nachos as a uh, mentor of his. <laughs> and, I'm really happy that I was able to get this opportunity to teach today. Um, so, I started my Bura with um, thinking a lot of people because the topic of my Bura is about um, Hakrat HaTov or um, recognizing the good. Uh, okay, so this is a story sheet if you didn't get it in the group chat. Um, it's a little long because um, and I put it in English and Hebrew so that it can be as accessible as possible. Um, but basically, um, the way it's, I structured it is that Hakarat um, HaTov, or if you translate it, I, like if you exactly translate it as recognizing the good. Um, so colloquially, we think about it as terms of talking about appreciation and thanks uh, and giving gratitude. So that's the kind of thing that I'm going to be focusing on today. Um, I actually just heard a really good share on Sunday um, from our JLAC educator, Tal Atia, who previously worked at Brandeis, but um, she gave our Colel this Sunday night, and she talked a lot about actually the beginning of my share today, so I was like, wow, Tal, great men think alike. Um, so in the beginning, in the um, middle of Dvarim, we talk about the Bikurim, which are the first fruits that... Um, someone is supposed to give when they come to the, when, give to the Beit HaMikdash um, for their first, through their first crop. It's supposed to be a symbol of um, Thanksgiving. Um, does anyone want to read? It's, I know it's a little long, but it's just a cool um, series to start it off. Okay. Uh, you shall take some of every first fruit of the soil, which you harvest from the land that the Lord your God is giving you. Put it in a basket and go to the place where the Lord your God will choose to establish his name. You shall go to the priest in charge at that time and say to him, I acknowledge this day before the Lord your God that I have entered the land that the Lord swore to our fathers to assign us. The priest shall take the basket from your hand and set it down in front of the altar of the Lord your God. You shall then recite as follows before the Lord your God. My father was a fugitive Aramean. He went down to Egypt with meager numbers and sojourned there. But there he became a great and very populous nation. The Egyptians dealt harshly with us and oppressed us. They imposed heavy labor upon us. We cried to the Lord, the Lord of our fathers, and the Lord heard our plea and saw our plight, our misery, and our oppression. The Lord freed us from Egypt by a mighty hand, by an outstretched arm and awesome power, and by signs and portents. He brought us to this place and gave us this land, a land flowing with milk and honey, where I now bring the first fruits of the soil which you, O Lord, have given me. You shall leave it before the Lord your God and bow low before the Lord your God. And you shall enjoy, together with the Levite and the stranger in your midst, all the bounty that the Lord your God has bestowed upon you and your household. Amazing. Thanks, Shira. So basically this, um, the Kareem, or the first fruits, um, is supposed to be a symbol of our gratitude and appreciation to Hashem for giving us the crop that we have. Um, it's pretty cool that the first thing that we think about when we're, um, like, I know we have a garden um, and that 
be Kareem obviously doesn't apply at our time right now. But to think about that, the first thing that we're supposed to do with our crop is to bring it to um, the Mish to the Behemikdash and to kind of use this as a symbol of our appreciation to Hashem and re recognition that like the land isn't ours and that as much as we could say that like like I did this myself like I worked the land hard which is totally in its right um but to kind of st step back a little bit and be like oh yeah like take appreciation for the fact that the rain rained at exactly the right time and the sun is the exact right place for us to be able to have the crop that we have um and to be so successful and that especially in this time we talked about it a lot a little bit on Sunday night um that this was kind of their livelihood and this is what they fed off of and so that the fact that Hashem gave them this beautiful crop um they it's really cool that within the structure of Judaism we have this ability to kind of thank Hashem um and recognize that as much as we worked hard um Hashem gave us the fruit that we have and the food that we have um so another thing within the um tradition is that we have this korban toda um which is an offering of thanksgiving that we're supposed to give um Gila, you want to read it? It's the second source on the page. Sure. Okay. Ima tzadai kriveni vekriv et al zeva chatoda chalot matzot bililot b'shemen rakikei. This is hard. Rakikei matzot mishuchim b'shemen b'solat mor befet chalot bilu bililot b'shemen. If he offers it for Thanksgiving, he shall offer together with the sacrifice of Thanksgiving unleavened cakes, unleavened cakes with oil mixed in, unleavened wafers spread with oil, and cakes of choice flour with oil mixed in, well soaked. Thank you, Gila, for reading. Um, but basically, obviously, this isn't as lavish as our usual Thanksgiving that we have now. Um, <laughs> But the idea is that every time, I mean, I mean, obviously we don't have it now, but um, the idea of things is very ingrained in the Jewish tradition. So it's a really cool concept to think about in terms of how ingrained it is in the way to talk about um, our day and our year. Um, um, so I brought, the next two sources I brought are like an example of someone in Tanakh that um gives things so i'll read um but it's from smoke park back with end of um the first second um tavo am el ruel abihan romer madua maritan hayo ba ba hayo but tamrana ish mitri hitsilani yaro gando dala honey by ruel comes which is another name that we quickly will say is um yitro um and he has a lot of daughters and um this just the background of the story is that um they um these daughters were at the um were at the well they wanted to go drink some water um they they wanted to water their flock and um the daughters um when when they came back their daughter their father said why are you back so soon like i don't understand what's going on um and the answer that this Egyptian rescued them from these shepherds who were about to um, take over the well and hurt their flock. Um, and so he said to, the, to his daughters, where is this guy? Um, why did you leave him there? Like, why didn't you ask him to come over and thank him? Um, and so they finally go back and they find him. Um, and so they, he actually is me, Moshe. And so this is how Moshe, the story of how Moshe finds Sipor as a wife. Um, and I thought that this was a really cool part of the story because it shows that even not necessarily not non-Jews, but that it's kind of this way of thinking of like, of, of gratitude in terms of, okay, now that this person did something nice to you, we have to pay it back and pay it forward in terms of our returning the favor and being able to give back that thanks that, um, for the fact that he saved their crop. So, um, and Moshe, um, very much agrees to this 
plan and it becomes becomes part of their family which i think is a little extreme um obviously i don't think that like every time someone does something for you that you should go marry them but i think that the sentiment is definitely still there that he this was his way of giving thanks to moshe for saving his daughters um so then in parak Dalid, which is not that much later in the tanakh it kind of moshe pays it back to his father-in-law which i think is really cool um he says um so basically moshe gives this um big burning bush as we all know the big story of how moshe comes to know hashem and hashem tells him that he has to go down to mitzrayim and save the jewish people and instead of just like packing up his stuff and just going um because hashem told him to um as much as that would have been nice um and very much like Abraham, um he has to do one more thing before he goes and that is he gets permission from his father-in-law to go um and i think that that this is a really wet really cool way of kind of reciprocating that thanks and that invitation into his home that yitro gave him instead of just like saying like hey we're piecing out like going to save the jewish people he stops and says oh i need to ask permission because it he did me a favor so i might as well um give him the courtesy to be able to kind of uh, give that thanks back so i thought that, that was a really cool story to be able to illustrate the kind of re reciprocity also in giving thanks and that um kind of the snowball effect that giving gratitude and um doing something nice for someone can have because in the end of the day he still he Moshe did this really nice thing for his father-in-law and i thought that that was a really nice gesture okay so um as much as we don't have korban out now and i know that the kareem and the korban toza are not necessarily something that we do nowadays i thought it was really cool to kind of explore um i gave you three different places throughout the liturgy of our sitter um but i have i'm sure that there are more places within the sidor that um giving thanks comes up but these are three big places where um giving thanks comes up in our liturgy so they're they're not in order i should have put them in order um but actually source six which is um the um blessings that we say at, in birkot shachar um which are usually said in the morning um are kind of these very specific brachot, um, and I know that I sometimes have a little bit of a harder time connecting to some of them just because they're a little out of there. But I think that the sentiment like, and the concept is still there that, and even if you don't necessarily connect to each one of these brachot, um, but just to go through them quickly, um, um, to give us the ability to distinguish between the night and the day, um, I know that that's probably very difficult for people now to be able to, <laughs> days kind of blend into each other sometimes. Um, and so the idea of like distinguishing the day from the night, I think is really cool um, that he is the king of the world. Um, he didn't make me a Gentile. He didn't make me a slave. Thank God we're not slaves anymore. I mean, we are slaves to different things. And that's probably a whole nother sheer in and of itself um, <laughs> about slave mentality. But um, we are definitely not slaves in the way that um, we were in Mitzrayim. Um, that he made us according to our will. Um, he opened the, so then I think towards the end, you get a little bit more into things that we can kind of rip our head, our head around, especially in the morning when you, the fact that you can open your eyes. Um, I know that now with allergies, my eyes get really watery and stuff sometimes, but the fact that I can open my eyes in the morning is pretty awesome. Um, the fact that we have clothing, who releases the bound, straightens the bent. Um, he places the land on water, the, fact that we have land um it fulfills all my needs for me i think that that's something that's really really awesome um and who studies the steps of man the fact that we can walk um the fact that um he gives us courage um he who crowns israel with splendor um and he gives us all these he gives the weary strength and removes sleep from my eyes and slumber from my pupils and i think that this is really cool that every single day at the beginning of our day we're so specific in the way that we give gratitude to hashem for the things in our life um and i think that that is something that is really important in terms of 
I mean, there's a lot of psychology in terms of like how you give thanks. Um, I'm a psychology major, so, <laughs> you know, psych. Um, but it's very important sometimes to just not give that blanket, like, oh yeah, thanks um, for making me alive. Like, that's really cool and that's really important, but like to make sure that as much as we can to be specific in the way that we give thanks, whether it's, thank you so much, mom, for making me my lunch. Or thank you to your brother to let for letting you use the Wi-Fi or anything, but that the fact that we can be as specific as possible in our thanks, I think, is makes the per other person so much more appreciative of the fact that we're giving them that type of gratitude, um, because um, then it just it seems so much more personal and genuine that way. Um, so the, sec the second part of the one, the giving things in our liturgy, which is source five, actually, um, is Mizmar um, Latoda, which is in at the end of Pesuket de Zimra, which is after Baruch Shamar, um, right before Ashrei. Um, and so it's a really interesting placement, and I'm sure that this one um, park of Tehillim could be a whole sheer in and of itself, um, and I only have a few more minutes, but I wanted to put it in here because I think it's important piece we also also stand up for this which i think is really cool to um that all of these three that i gave you are all things that we stand up for and we're is a sign of standing up during prayer is a sign of respect um so i think that it's really cool that this thanksgiving it's basically a it's called a psalm of thanksgiving um and so the the fact that we stand for this type of means more and that it's in our um suke de Zimra, i think it's super cool and important um the third and last one of um, the examples of in our liturgy is um, Modim, which is in one of the um, 18 parts of our Abidah, um, our, the standing prayer. Um, so it's really cool. I, I mean, the whole um, does has a very structured way of thinking about it and looking at it. Um, but I think that it's really important, great that we have this type of um, Thanksgiving prayer within our Amida, which is a very close connection and relationship and time that we have with Hashem. Um, and so I think that it's towards the end after we've had this type of whole experience of leading up to, we've had our time to focus and try to figure out, um, we, we have these three ideas of Shevach Bakasha and Hoda'a. So that's um, giving thanks and like giving praise to Hashem. Um, Bakasha is asking. And then Hoda'a, we end with thanks and um, pray and another form of praise. Um, and so this is the very beginning of that section. I think that that is super important that we have it in within the, the most intimate and um, I think the penultimate of our davening is the Amidah. And it's one of those things that even if you have 10 minutes to daven, this is something that you need to daven every day. And the fact that this is in it, I think is super important and cool um, and kind of goes along the kinds of themes that we've been talking about in terms of, and Amidah sometimes also um, and liturgy and prayer in general has been very much linked to Korbanot, um, and has this, there's a beautiful, um, section in, um, the Talmud about, of Brachot about, um, how, um, Tzfilah is a, um, new institution for Korbanot, um, but that the fact that we can kind of view this as our own type of Korban, um, and way of thanking Hashem, I think is a really cool, um, way to help structure your day. Um, and so I gave the last source that I have here is a, um, giving things can make you happier. It's a, um, quote from the Harvard health publishing. Um, and I think that something that I've definitely been thinking about a lot in terms of being in quarantine is being thankful. Um, and also being thankful for the little things like the fact that I got up this morning, <laughs> um, or just the fact that like I had a really good iced coffee this morning. Um, just like those little things that can make um, your day a little bit better. So it says that in in positive, just to um, skim through it a little bit, um, one thing that to point out is in positive psychological research, um, gratitude is strongly and consist consistently associated with greater happiness. So being grateful and thankful for things that you have in your life ultimately leads to a greater life satisfaction and happiness within your life and within your day. Um, people will feel and express their attitude in multiple ways. They can apply it to your past and retrieving positive memories and being thankful for elements of childhood or 
past blessing. So like saying that like, I'm grateful that I went to SAR for elementary school and high school, or like, I'm so grateful that I grew up in White Plains, um, just as examples of that. Um, the present, um, not taking good fortune for granted as it comes. So especially now in the time of quarantine, um, being not taking things for granted, the fact that I do have a computer and I do have internet, whether I like to think that it works or not, um, the fact that I have it at all is still a blessing, um, and the future and maintaining a hopeful and optimistic attitude of the future, um, as much as that sometimes could be difficult. Um, thinking about what could come from this and what excitement you can bring into the world and the positive things that you can take out of this time, I think are definitely cool ways to kind of think about um, the past, present, and future um, aspects of gratitude. Um, and I think that something that I've definitely thought about and started redoing, I've, I've been doing it on and off for a little while, um, is I have a gratefulness journal um, and I try to write every night and before you go, I go to sleep, w at least one thing that I'm grateful for. And I think that that, or you can do it at the beginning of the day, but either way, I think a concretizing it and writing it down um, that in in psychology also writing helps you concretize a feeling or emotion, um, but that writing it down and then seeing it on the paper and actually thinking about it a little bit more um, can help kind of uh, restructure and frame how we think about the things that we have in our life. Um, the fact that we have Instacart and that we can get food as quickly as we can. Um, just those little things, I think, can kind of help us reframe um, the way that we're thinking about quarantine and just our lives in general. Um, but I think specifically now, it's super important to think about gratitude and um, how we can apply it. So yeah, if anyone has anything they wanna share or something that they're grateful for. Um, I know this is like a weird time. I mean, I think it's a good time to have like a share like this, but like, I feel like I wanna go have turkey and gr like gravy for like lunch, but definitely not going to do that. But um, I think that it's definitely an important piece of our, that Judaism finds it important to give thanks and gratitude, I think is a super cool thing in general. Um, and definitely has helped me to kind of be like, oh yeah, this is a Jewish concept. It's not like a, just a concept in general. It's like a real concept in our, in Judaism. So yeah. Then has any thoughts?